All right, friends, here we are on another business chat. It is Friday, the 5th of March. Uh, the year is uh, well, almost gone if you haven't made plans and you're not consistently working your plans. So uh, thank you for joining us at another very interesting topic. And today we are going to have um, one of our founders of the, the chamber uh, and a guy who I met a couple of years ago. And uh, Amongst one of his other traits, apart from being a successful businessman, he's also an avid photographer. And he's going to just introduce a topic uh, like, uh, uh, you know, business. He says, says, business through the eyes of a photographer. I say, change your lens, change your life. But Ivan, let me hand it over to you and just take us through the topic. Great. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jasper. Yeah. And, and welcome to anybody who's watching and listening. Special welcome to Dawn and Jasper here. Um, yeah, it is. It's 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 a it is an interesting topic for me. I hope it's going to be an interesting topic for everybody else. I'm going to put up a little bit of a PowerPoint. It's not fancy. It's uh, just some key prompters to hopefully make make you think. And I think that's what we we like to do. Is we like to try and get people thinking. We like to try and um, uh, give people a different perspective. And, and that's what photography is really all about. Is is looking at things through different eyes. So. What is, it, what is it all about? Well, there's a couple of key things. So the first, the first thing that came to mind when I, was, uh, when I was thinking about this particular chat and this topic is the word DOF. So depth of field is, is a concept that is quite key to photography and, and we'll go into that in a little bit more detail as we go through. So that's the first one I uh, wanted to introduce and let's just talk about it. So it's determined by a couple of different things. Uh, something called f-stop or aperture. So that's the size of the of the window that you're actually looking through in your in your lens, and then that that determines. So the smaller uh, the smaller the the aperture, um, the narrower your depth of field, and the wider your aperture, the the bigger your depth of field. So that's one of the elements that we'll chat about. The other is focal length. Okay, so how far or how close are you actually focusing? Um, so are you looking business terms? Are you looking you know twelve months, thirty six months? 60 months, you know, 10 years down the road, or are you looking tomorrow, next week, uh, next month? So what is your what is your focal length in terms of where you're actually looking? And then your distance from the subject, how far away are you from, from the thing that you're actually trying to trying to focus on? Um, the closer you are, funny enough, your, your depth of field gets, gets smaller, so you see less. The further away, uh, your depth of field gets bigger, so you see more. Um, so can you distance yourself uh, from, from the things that you're trying to look at within, within your business? All right, so the next thing is the type of lens. You know, what is, uh, you know, uh, Jasper said, you know, change your lens. Uh, and that's, uh, that's what uh, that's, uh, avid photographers like to do. You know, we have a bunch of different lenses sitting in our, in our bags. Um, many of you may just be familiar with the lens that sits on the back of your smartphone or Maybe you've got a point and shoot that uh, has a little bit of ability to, to, to do different things, but um, you get into, into serious photography, or whether you're an amateur or professional, you'll have a bunch of different lenses. So you'll have something called a prime lens. And what is a prime? A prime, prime is a lens that has a fixed focal length. So in other words, you can't change it. It, it, it will always focus um, at the same focal length. It could be a 50 millimeter or 105 millimeter or 200 millimeter or 400 millimeter and that's called a prime prime lens uh, so you can't actually change the focal length of that lens it's it looks at a, at a fixed um, i mean you can focus on different subjects closer and further away but you can't change the magnification that the lens actually uses then you've got something uh, called a zoom lens uh, which uh, you'll be more familiar with perhaps because you can zoom in and out with uh, some cell phones some smartphones you can you can increase the size of uh, uh, the, the image on your on your screen, um, and that's effectively a zooming. Or you've got a point and shoot, which you can which you can zoom in and out with that gets you further away or closer closer to your subject. And then you have something called a macro lens. Now, a macro lens allows you to get really close uh, to to see real fine detail, um, and uh, and get really close up to your subjects and and see what's going on there. And then you have a wide angle, which uh, Think perhaps, perhaps is really quite self-explanatory. You know, it means you, you've got a big, big perspective of view. You, you've got a wide angle. You can see uh, lots in the image, but you won't see so much detail. Uh, so the detail is perhaps a bit less, um, but you've got a, you've got a much uh, broader view of what's going on in front of you. And then finally, I think the, 
the, the, the, I mean, there's lots of other elements in photography, but I'm not going to get too technical, I hope. Uh, and the other is, is your shutter speed. So you've got, a, you've got a couple of choices here. You can have a fast shutter speed, or you can have a slow shutter speed. And, and what does that do? So a fast shutter speed will tend to stop motion. Um, and, and if you're obviously trying to take, uh, take a picture of, of something and you want uh, great clarity of, of what it is, whether it's a, a slow moving or a fast mo moving object, you, you want to have a fast shutter speed so it stops that motion. Using a slow shutter speed though can give you a very different view of what's going on. Um, so you can actually see movement, you can see uh, um, uh, you know, changes in, in what's happening in, in, in a still image, which is an amazing thing. So you can actually get a completely different view of, of exactly the same scene just by changing your shutter speed, by changing the, the snapshot of what you're actually looking at within your business. Um, or, or, your, or, your, or your, um, your camera. And then finally, two things which I think are, are fairly obvious from both a business and a, and a uh, photography perspective, but uh, perhaps not. So let's talk about perspective and focus. So uh, the question is, you know, what perspective do you have and, and where do you focus? So both within your image and, and, and your business. So yeah, just a little bit of fun. So, you know, do you treat your business a bit like this? You know, are you bored? Are you lying there just uh, wondering what happened and maybe not even thinking about just hoping something might happen next, uh, you know, sitting with your backside in a puddle of water, not really knowing what, uh, where to go or what, uh, what's happening. And unfortunately, I think too many business people do exactly that. You know, they, 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 they just, they exist. Uh, they, they not spending enough time really looking at their business from different angles, from different perspectives uh, and, and with different focuses. Um, so what, let's have a look at some of those as examples. So here, here's a, here's an example of a, <clears throat> of a view of a particular flower on a mountainside. Now you can see the clarity of the, of, of the, of the close-up image, uh, so the focus is really close, but there's this uh, perception of, of uh, space and and uh, um, a view behind it. Uh, and you know, you can take that into a business environment, and you can look at it and say, right, well, you know, I've got sort of this idea of the bigger picture behind it, but right now I'm honing in on this particular element uh, within my business, and, and I'm going to look at it in a lot of detail and and a lot of clarity, but not forgetting that there's this broader picture behind me. Um, so that would, if you look at this, you've got a shallow depth of field. So you can see the background is blurred. Um, the image up front is, is sharply in focus. So it's, it's a pinpoint uh, that you're looking at the details there on that particular. So that could be an element within your business. It could be a specific product, a specific service, a specific, specific person um, you know, who's, who's operating within your business, a function a process, uh, any of these sorts of things. You could be looking at that in a high level of detail, but keeping in mind that there's a bigger picture um, behind. Then you could just simply look at the landscape. You could, you could look out there, you could say, okay, I can see the, the broad wide picture. I can, you know, I can see the valleys, I can see the mountains, I can see the clouds. You know, I, I've, got this, I've got this overview of, of what's really going on in my business. and. Uh, and it's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice clear picture, you know, there's perhaps a bit of um, lack of, of uh, detail in, in, in the background there, but that's not, not, too, not too serious because I've got this broad perspective, I can see what's going on. Um, and that would be, uh, you know, that would be a sort of wide angle perspective of your business. Uh, and then coming back to, to uh, you know, a more sort of analytical perspective, you know, you might want to you might want to really zoom into something tiny, you know, you might look at, look at some detail, you know, pick up, you care, you can see there's no depth of field at all. You can't really see what's in the background. All you can see is what's happening right in front of you right now. Even some of those elements that are in front of that are not, are not clear um, because there's no visibility on, on what's actually going on. But you're now going into some very specific detail and you can, you could take that even further. So this is a, this is, in photography terms, this is a macro view uh, or a macro lens. It's not a macro view, obviously. Uh, when you say macro view, people think of the big view. So it's a micro view, but it's done with a macro lens, which is a little bit confusing for some people within <laughs> who are not familiar with the photographic terms. But uh, but you can even get closer, so you can actually go right in and then really look at look at the, the minutia of the detail of a process. And I think this is this is an absolutely key thing when when you 
I think things aren't working as well as they should be within your business. Um, can you actually focus in on that detail? Can you look at it from a different angle, from a different perspective, um, and and start to work out how you can fine tune it, how you can make uh, make things change? And here again, you can see there's 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 no depth of field. Um, you know, there's only parts of this are in focus, and and to to go through this process, you would need to then move. Uh, your perspective uh, in millimeter by millimeter, and in this case, in fact, fractions of a millimeter to get the, the next level of detail, the next level of detail. So you'd be stepping your way through a process, through a system, through through a um, function within your business, actually looking at that detail in, um, in, with great concentration and great focus uh, to, to analyze what's actually happening. And I think the key right at the end of the day, um, you know, is simply focus. Do you have your vision focused on something ahead of you? Are you distracted by anything? Are you allowing, you know, the noise around you to, to, uh, to deter you, to distract your vision, to to move you away from what you focused on, um, and, uh, and 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 keep your focus there. I mean, that was one of the amazing things we were chatting just before the session started about this amazing summit that we we had yesterday um, with business people from Nigeria. It, it was. It, you know the, the word that kept on coming through was 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 focus was consistency was you know the clarity of 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 the vision that you're actually looking at and and do you have that for your business are you able to actually define that in in real terms for your business and and know uh where your focal your focal points are so yeah in a nutshell i think that's uh that's really it um from uh from the eyes of a photographer around your business, I hope it's given you some uh, some thoughts, some ideas, uh, some perhaps a little bit of inspiration. Uh, if not, perhaps a little, just a little bit of entertainment. You know, some hopefully reasonable photographs uh, uh, that you've enjoyed looking at. Um, and uh, yeah, one last thing, I'm just going to pop into the chat box, and uh, uh, if you haven't watched it, I would encourage you to watch it. Uh, there's a YouTube video. Um, that was done by a guy, done by a guy by the name of Dewitt. Dewitt, I'm not, he calls himself Dewitt so Jasper, not Dewitt. Okay, so he's Dewitt Jones. Uh, he's a National Geographic photographer out of out of the US, uh, and and he does some amazing amazing stuff on uh, on YouTube. Um, uh, so he's Dewitt Jones, and one of his videos um, uh, is uh, called celebrate what's right with the world um, but he does a lot of business um, uh, motivational uh, type talks and and training and then he always does it from the perspective of a photographer and and you know being a national geographic photographer i mean that's high high quality stuff um, but his take and his view and, and his perspective uh, on business and life uh, is is really something that uh, that can inspire and and encourage us uh, you know just to do better uh with our businesses you know take that long-term view bring it back take a medium-term view bring it back take a short-term view take the macro get a real close-up view and then make sure that it all works back uh to the big picture and i think that's that's the real key you know uh, as our ceo trivenel likes to say start with the end in mind get that last frame <laughs> excuse me get that last frame and then wind it back and take those snapshots right there we go so that was me done and dusted thanks thanks a lot uh, ivan i think uh, it's a very apt topic and uh, uh, you know uh, if you can maybe well uh, i don't know if you've got a summary slide of all those uh, terms that you've used like depth of field and lenses and shutter speed and perspective but don't worry about that we can just discuss about it, but I see an absolute, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, an, an alignment in the analogy for business people as well. Because I think to be a photographer, uh, you know, what came to mind as you were going through it is, on the one hand, uh, it's the interplay between having the right tools and knowing how to use it, but also be creative uh, to know what tools you need for what situation. So, uh, you know, I, I think of so many people when they get a new idea, the first thing they go, they buy the most expensive equipment, but they've got no idea what to use it for. And uh, then there's a waste and a frustration. So uh, 
maybe just uh, you know if, if one used the analogy of a businessman is like this artist uh, in in a new field and he sees things that the average person don't see i mean you're that amazing detailed i don't even know what hoha was it that you showed us uh, but you must have had lots lots of patience uh, and i don't know how close you were but to, to, to even find that thing uh, and no way to look for it. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think from a, from an, that kind of perspective, where does one start? Because I think uh, the science of business has become, looking at what you've done, make me almost want to be a photographer uh, and want to become a businessman with that kind of mindset. I think the way the university trains people for entrepreneurship and stuff like that, it's actually hard, it's a slog, it's not nice, it's a, a bore. And I think if we could have almost approaching our current economy, even the current uh, COVID economy, but we, we approach it with that kind of sense of wonderment and look at it through different lenses. Uh, so maybe if you just want to give a comment, how do, how do you now change your perspective as a businessman in these tough times and become like a photographer? Yeah, thanks, Jasper. And yeah, I think you, you, you make some great points there. Just welcome to Rajesh. Uh, glad you could join us. Um, we are uh, just chatting about business from through the eyes of a photographer this morning. And uh, unfortunately, you've just uh, just missed a little bit of a, an intro that I did there. But uh, I'm sure you'll I'm sure you'll pick up uh, on where Thank we're you. going. Good. OK, so yeah, Jasper, you were saying uh, and, and I, I, you know, I couldn't agree more, you know, often often things get cast into certain molds. So you know, if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you must go and do this course and you must go and do that course. And this is the way you do it. And that's the way you do it. And this is what you mustn't do. And this is what you must do. And these are the tools that you need. And you know, that's all very, very structured and, and focused. And, and even more so if you go into the corporate environment and you know, these are the rules and regulations and the policies and the processes and, and, and things like that. And, and, and you get fixed into one mode of operation. You know, we get fixed into one focal length, if you like, from, from, from a photographic perspective. We get fixed into one aperture. We get fixed into one shutter speed. And, and, and we just can't break out of it. And, uh, and, you know, you spoke about people going out and buying the most expensive equipment. And then every time they pick up the camera, they just press the shutter release. They don't understand what all the different bits and pieces are that they can they can do with with this camera. You know, the different perspectives they can have, the different um, you know angles of view, the the, the different depths of field. Uh, you know, all of those sorts of things. They 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 haven't gone into that. They think because they've bought an expensive camera, it's going to take fantastic photographs. And in fact, there's a, a lovely story. I'm digressing a little bit, but. Uh, there's a lovely story about this professional photographer and uh, he's, he's got a friend who's a, who's a professional cook, professional chef. Um, and uh, the chef comes and, and to the photographer and, and is looking at his photographs and, and you know, it's a amazing, you know, amazing photographs you've got here, really incredible. You must have a really good camera. And uh, the photographer, you know, is just, so it doesn't react too much to that, but anyway, a few days later, he's at the at the chef's house and, uh, and they're having dinner there, and uh, you know, the great dinner and magic magic food and all the rest of it. And after the dinner, the, the photographer says to the chef, "You know, that was really a fantastic meal. You must have an amazing stove." Uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, that's that's the challenge. People think because you buy expensive equipment, you're going to produce fancy results. And uh, it's never about that. It's, it's about how you use that tool. So you don't, you can have a, a cheap camera and you can take amazing photographs if you know how to use it properly. Um, and if you're prepared to spend the time looking at the different um, possibilities and, and, and the different mechanisms and and I think that's exactly the same with business. You know, uh, you can have the, the, the most expensive consultants and the, and the fanciest products and services and, you know, offices with gold taps. And, you know, we've had companies in this country that did that in the 2000 boom uh, when, you know, they seem to be a license to print money for a short period of time. Um, does it mean you're a good business? I don't think it does. Um, 
you know, that's uh, you've you've gone you've gone and invested a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, you know, that if it's used correctly, um, can create a great business for you. But just because you have it doesn't mean you've got a great business, or you should have something that's going to generate lots of cash for you. It's how you how you how you work with those tools, whatever they are, and and, and I don't believe you need to to go that kind of route. I think all you've got to do is you've got to. You've got to be focused, as I said earlier, you know, you've, you've really got to know what is that last frame that you're looking for, whether it's three years, five years, 10 years down the road, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Have you identified what that last frame is in your, in, in your, um, in your movie? And can you now start bringing those snapshots back from there, bringing them back? And, and there might be multiple streams of, 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 of uh, snapshots that you're bringing back from that wide angle you know long long distance perspective of of what your business is um have you done it do you, do you actually do that within your business how often do you review it how often do you retake those photographs uh you know how often do you how often do you change your perspective of the way you're looking at something you know just because something worked for you in the past doesn't mean it's going to work for you in the future first uh first definition or the what, what is it the, the uh, first sign of madness is the, is keep on doing the same things and expecting the result to change. And I think that's absolutely true in, in, in you know, the current economic climate that we find ourselves in. People think, well, because it worked for me 18 months ago, it's going to work for me you know, going forward. Well, maybe not, you know. I mean, you know, Dawn, your business is a classic example. Um, you know, it wasn't a case of it's just not working. It, it just stopped. <laughs> you know, that was this hard, you know, uh, break in terms of in terms of your industry and your business. So you've been forced to, to actually look at things differently, to take a different perspective. Um, but you know, one doesn't want to get into that position. I mean, here you didn't have a choice, obviously, because it was factors way outside of everybody's control. Um, but think about it if you did that with your business on a regular basis. And, and, and I mean, you don't need to do it every single day, obviously, but you need to have a structured um, plan and a, and a structured process where, where you are re-evaluating. Re I mean, one of the key thing, things about business is the cycle of, of creation and destruction. You know, if you if you you create and, and it goes well, but you know, get to a point where you need to actually where you need to actually break it. You need to break it, you need to change it, you need to make something different. Um, nothing keeps on going forever. Uh, and you know, some some products, some services might have a long life cycle, others not. Um, but it's 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 how you look at it, and, and I think as you said, yes, but especially in, in today's world, we have to start looking at things extremely uh, differently. We need to really change our our perspective, our focus, our um, our lens completely. Uh, you know, we were talking about Zoom fatigue. Um, you know, people coming onto these platforms feeling that you know it's 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 exhausting. You know, I'm not. Uh, I'm just spending all my time in front of this computer. Um, but what is your objective? Have you actually really defined, you know, why you're here? Uh, what do you want out of it? How are you going to actually um, get it? And uh, and if not, you know, then you haven't changed. You haven't changed your perspective. You you haven't changed the way you're looking at things. You're just just going through the motions, hoping that the results will change. And and that's fatal. Uh, Dawn, you would like to make a comment or add something? Oh, no, wait, thanks, yes, but thanks, Alvin. I love your comparison between photography and business. It was really a stunning, stunning comparison. So just a couple of things. I think, you know, when you say focus, and, and to focus today is so hard because there are just so many distractions. I mean, people are bombarding you with emails, come and try be this affiliate and be that affiliate. I can't tell you how many affiliates I've been that have been sent to me to, to come on board with. And you look at them all, they look great, but you know what, don't get, it's so hard not to get distracted and pulled in this direction and that direction because you only have so many hours in the day. So to be focused more than ever now is, is imperative. So that was the one. And then, uh, you know, like you said, Ivan, you know, I've had to reset my whole after 20 years of business. I've had to now stop and reset. And I mean, you put everything into that one focused business because it was successful. And uh, now we are, we are slowly getting back into the retail side. So 
fortunately, I'm getting existing customers that are coming back and know me well. So I've built that foundation of, of a, a, a reliable uh, source for them. So thank goodness they are coming back to me and we are getting projects in, uh, in the retail space. We're also focusing on the domestic uh, scene now. We have done it in the past, but it wasn't a key focus of ours. And then just on the lens, um, becoming the camera, you know, uh, I, a lot of people know of Sally Anderson from New Zealand. And she says that too, become your projector, project your life. Become the projector, project your life, then live what you project. So for me, that's also such a powerful, uh, the synergy between you and, and Sally Anderson, which is a, she's such a, a wonderful inspiration. And then just, I was just thinking about also in the old days, we had the black and white photos, which you actually have to go back to because black and white is more defined. So I think in business, you need to look at the black and white. Don't go for the gray. The gray areas are the murky areas and that's what's going to pull you back. So for me, I live with black and white. If it's too gray, I want to get rid of it because it's sucking my time and my energy and everything. So thanks, Ivan. I really enjoyed that. Thanks, thanks, Sonia. And you, you pick up on an uh, interesting point there. And it's one of the things I actually thought about when, when I was uh, thinking about this particular topic this morning was exactly that difference between, between black and white. And uh, I actually have a photograph, which I didn't show this morning, which uh, as a color photograph is at best mediocre. In black and white, it's stunning. Um, and uh, and so, so, yeah, sometimes, you know, just the... Uh, you know, change, changing those kind of things can make a huge difference as well. So, uh, good point. So, yeah. Rajesh, uh, you sort of come I, in now. I, I, I mean, while, while we're getting Rajesh on for his comment, go and find, find us that photograph. I think it will be a good... Uh, uh, Rajesh, yes. Uh, just to... I don't know how much of uh, his talk uh, you listened to, but he used the analogy of the various components of photography, like depth field and different lenses and shutter speed and perspective and focus and how it applies to the language and the role of the businessman. So you being a, a, an experienced businessman yourself, is there any comment or addition that you want to add to the topic? Yeah, I think it's the fluidity that we need to reflect on um, constantly, Jasper, because um, you know, if, if, you know, we, in the past, we spoke about uh, this concept called the rate of, the rate of change. And <clears throat> the rate of a change is something that has been always transient in so far as it seems to increase, um, you know, all the time. But if we look at uh, what's happened to the landscape now with the COVID-19, and its impact on human beings, never mind business, you know, it's put us in a completely different paradigm as far as the way we have to do things. Uh, the new normal is a cliche now. And, um, and then rolling that up into the business context simply means that, you know, we have to look at life and our businesses with different lenses. Um, it's almost as though throwing away your old camera and bringing on a new one, but that new camera may have to take us back to certain foundational concepts as we consider what we need to do with our businesses. So it's quite radical, it's quite transformational, and I think there must be a realization that the way we look at our business now going forward um, has to take a completely fresh view, a novel view sometimes, and certainly a radical view. If not, we find that will become irrelevant very quickly. Thanks, Casper. Uh, Thanks, uh, Rajesh. Uh, Ivan, are you ready for us with that picture? Not yet. Okay, uh, yeah, the other um, analogy that is also coming to mind is uh, 
Well, do to a couple of things, Ivan, that you can then comment on. Um, I don't know whether positioning is a different word than perspective. Um, so, you know, some people just have an eye how to position uh, an image that when you look at it, you say a stunning picture. And another person takes this, that same picture of that same grouping, but somehow they don't, didn't place it in the right context. So maybe one can just be, uh, maybe debate around that a bit. And then I was also thinking of uh, to be a good photographer and for that, uh, you know, in that analogy, then a good businessman is knowledge of your topic and knowing knowledge of the conditions. So for instance, certain things uh, you can shoot in the early morning light, some in the afternoon light uh, and stuff like that. So uh, maybe you just want to take that as a, as a, as a start and say, all right, how does it apply to business and, and also maybe elaborate more about how true it is in photography. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Asper. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, a couple of good points there. Yeah, uh, I think perspective point of view, um, pro probably fairly similar. Um, but it's also how you frame. So, so you, you might, uh, you might take, be taking a picture of the same scene as, as you said correctly there. And the one image looks great and the other image just looks at best ordinary. Um, and it does, it comes down to a number of different factors. Uh, and, and the, the first is the perspective. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things that, uh, photographers talk about, especially when you, when you're taking pictures of, of people and, and, uh, and wildlife is you want to try and get eye contact. Um, and, uh, you know, if you can, if you can actually engage, I think the last photograph I, I showed you guys, uh, of, of the vulture, you know, I've got, I've got great eye contact on that particular, on that particular image. And, uh, and, and it makes for a completely different picture. You know, if, if the animal was, you know, looking somewhere else or looking down or, or a person, you know, you, you'll get a photograph that it's oh hum, you know, um, but if you've got that eye contact, you know, so it's something about the visual nature of, of, of humans, I think where eye contact just makes, makes a difference. And uh, so it's it's that it's 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 the perspective. So are you shooting from above? Are you shooting from below? Are you shooting from the side? And um, what is the angle that you're actually approaching the particular subject from? Also makes a makes a massive difference. You know, a lot of photographs that you'll see um, that people have shot in in game parks and things like that. The, the perspective is always the same. It's potentially coming down because they're sitting on a game drive vehicle or something like that, and you know, you've got this, this view of, of uh, a skewed perspective in, in a way, if I can, if I can call it that. Um, and uh, you, you take it's the same picture of the same animal, but uh, instead of taking it from over here, you take it from, you know, down here and, and you're getting some eye contact that, that just changes the, the view completely. Um, so how do you do that with your business? I think, I think is, is the real question. And, and no, I think it's it's exactly the same process. You know, often, like I said earlier, you know, we go through the same things day after day after day after day, and, and we're not actually stopping and saying, "Hold on, let me let me let me take a step back. Let me let me look at it from this angle or from that angle. You know, let me try and get above it or get below it, and and, and actually see see how it looks from from that different perspective, and and actually analyze it from a different angle. You know, we get trapped into habitual. Um, patterns of thought and action um, and, and you know without without wanting to criticize anybody you know Dawn it, it's it's you know 20 years in the same business I've been 30 years in my business um, you know you, you do that you know you you you, you stop uh, necessarily taking those different views taking those those different perspectives because it's work that's you know less effort it's become habitual um, but uh, now you now we've been forced into into changing that. So I think that's uh, that's a really key a key element, and and make that habitual, make that that process of actually looking at things differently. And, you know, again, there's a fine balance. Um, you know, I think one can get into analysis paralysis. You know, you can you can start saying, well, I've got to always look at these things, and you 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 spend your whole life looking at things from different perspectives, and then you, again, that's just going to tie you in knots. Um, you know, so a certain 
certain ingrained habits are, are, are good, but uh, uh, you know, one needs to analyze them and see which ones are good and which ones are actually actually holding you back. Uh, and as I say, you know, if you look at look at it from a photographic perspective as well, you know, we we sit in our our vehicles or we take our selfies or, or whatever it is, and and I mean, you can see a little bit in, in the selfie world. You know, I'm, a, I'm an absolute hater of selfies. Uh, and don't particularly like taking pictures of people either because uh, you you get this uh, um what's the word false uh, i think is the word i'm looking for you get this false uh, image you get this false perception of what's actually there because because there's this effort to 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 make it look as if something is different something's not there so you're not getting a picture of reality and i think that's you know that's where you know, nature is, is, is very different. You know, there's no posing. <laughs> there's no, uh, there's no false perceptions. It is what it is. It's reality. And, and then as the photographer, your challenge is to make that image look good um, because the subject's not going to do it for you. So, you know, you have to look at it from a different angle, different perspective. So that's the one thing. And then, uh, sorry, yes, I lost the second part of your question. Do you remember what it was? <laughs> No, I am so enthralled <laughs> uh, your explanation, but maybe it'll come back. But uh, yeah. I think um, I was just playing on two thoughts. Uh, and maybe I, I hope I remember the two thoughts. But the first one was to say, uh, you know, the average person like myself, I've got a, a cell phone uh, and a good cell phone camera, and I do everything with the cell phone, and it's literally point, point and click, uh, and I'm happy with the result. And but you know someone with your knowledgeable eye uh, would, would say, no, that's a mediocre photo because I'm not seeing the artistic uh, side of it. I'm almost capturing the memory. Is that the, is that the part that you wanted to show us? Let me hand back to you. Yeah, no, no, but I think you're heading down the, the right line. I, I can't find the color version of this because I, I probably just got rid of it because I, it, it didn't, uh, didn't work nearly as well. But if you, if you look at, uh, um, you know, if you look at this, particular image and I don't know how well it's showing on your screens there um, but the, the, the you know the clarity and the focus again of the eyes if you look at the eyes um, you look at the detail around the the, the, the hair and, and so on uh, for me you know I just I just love that photograph and as I say the the original color version of that I almost deleted um, because it, it just just didn't do anything for me um, and uh, so, yeah, sometimes it's necessary to, to take that, that detail out um, to actually see detail that's really there, that's hidden, hidden behind the, uh, the, the color. Um, and, and I think in the dawn, as you correctly said, you know, some, sometimes we really need to do that with our businesses. You know, the, the color picture looks okay, but, you know, take some of that noise out of there, take some of that distraction out of there and, phone, and, and again, focus in on, on, uh, on what's really making up that particular picture in your business and, and you'll see, see it from a completely different perspective and i think that's you know that's uh, the, the the beauty of, of trying to use these kinds of analogies yeah i mean i think if you look at that uh, monkey's face you're actually focusing on the detail with that black and white image it actually draws you into its detail of its face and its eyes and and that's it exactly the black and white is more powerful than the color the color has got too much distraction mm -hmm. and i think like you say that's with your business you have to get rid of that distraction which becomes all the, the too much color and you, you break it in, into black and white and you get rid of the gray and you just focus on the important things yeah absolutely maybe just an, another thought that was the other thought i was thinking how, how do one start on this journey uh, to become a photographer, uh, what is, do you start with your tools or do you start with uh, going for a course? Uh, you know, what is the process? Yeah, yes, but, uh, you know, uh, it comes back to a point you made, made it earlier on as well. You know, people go out and they, they spend money on, on fancy kit and, and things like that. It doesn't matter whether you're a photographer or a golfer or a cyclist or a you know, uh, a runner, uh, you know, you can go out and spend lots of money on fancy kit. Does it make you good at any of those things? No. Um, you know, what you've, my mind, and, and this goes across the spectrum of, of life, really, at the end of the day, you've got to start by being curious. 
you got to you got to you got to really be curious about the subject, the topic, the business, whatever it is, whether it's photography or or, or, or business doesn't really matter. If, if you're not curious about it, you're never going to develop any real interest. So you're going to just be mediocre if you if you do go down that route. Same same thing, maybe a cyclist or a golfer or a runner. Now, if you're not really curious about what makes a good cyclist or a runner or a golfer, you know, are you ever going to improve? You're going to be mediocre at best. Doesn't matter how, how much fancy equipment you buy yourself. Um, and you can go on all the training courses in the world as well. You know, if you don't really have an interest, you know, so you'll be educated. So what? <laughs> you know? you use the word is passion. You've got to have a passion for it. You've got to love what you do because sure. it's not a you know, if you how, want do you, how do you how do you get that passion? So you you get that passion by first being curious, then becoming interested, <laughs> then gaining knowledge. You know, then gaining you know gaining some real understanding and belief, and then you can be passionate about it. And then then when you do go out and learn something, you do go um, in a course, you, you actually remember it and you can apply it because you've actually you have that you have that real interest in in what you're doing. And then when you go and buy your fancy equipment. Maybe you're not going to spend as much. I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a funny little acronym that uh, photographers use, and they say, you know, photographers get gas. And what they mean by that is uh, you get gear acquisition syndrome. So gas, you know, you, you always want to buy the next piece of kit, the latest, you know, the latest camera body, the latest lens, you know, um, because uh, you think it's, it's going to give you a better picture. Um, and, and it comes back to the, the little story I told about the photographer and, and, and the chef, you know. Um, yeah, sure. If you've got fancy equipment, guess what? From time to time, you're going to take a great picture. But it's going to be accident. It's not going to be intentional. You just got lucky. Okay. And, and, and the same is going to happen in any other sphere of life and business included. You now, from time to time, you might just get lucky. Um, but unless, unless you have that, that, that real um, you know, passion that has come from that process of, of uh, you know, starting off by really being curious about what, what it is and what's going to work and what's not going to work. Um, it's not sustainable. And I think that's the key. You know, you can, you can spend as much money as you like on courses and kit and, and things like that. But, you know, if, if, if you're just doing it because you want to say, I've got a fancy camera or, you know, I've got an amazing four by four or, or, you know, I've got the best set of golf clubs in the world. You know, you might get lucky once in a while and hit a hole in one, but that's probably going to be once in a lifetime if you're really lucky. Um, so yeah, I think that's that's really my perspective on on that. Okay, Ivan, I just want and, and uh, Dawn and Rajesh, you're welcome. If you put up your hand, if you have something else to comment on, but uh, I like this whole play with the business analogy, and uh, you know, so I'm putting you on the carpet on this one again. Uh, so, all right, so now here you start off as a photographer. Uh, so your journey as a photographer, uh, and I want to throw it under the question of what motivates you to keep going? So initially, is it to learn more about your art and then improve your gadgets? Um, and at what stage have you now got all the gadgets that you can think of and, and much as you can, uh, do you ever get to that point? And uh, let's say these top professional photographers, uh, what keep them going? Is it is it to look for that next perfect picture? Uh, so, uh, and then we can pull it through to the analogy for business. Yeah, look, I think I think I think it comes down to the the word that that Dawn used just now, and that's a passion for your subject. Um, you know, whatever that subject happens to be. You know, my my real interest in photography um, was sparked by, by my fascination with, with the little things. You know, a lot of people you know, want to take the big things, you know, the, the, the scenery, the buildings, the people, you know, the big five. Um, you know, that for, me, that for me was ordinary, to be blunt. It didn't mean anything. Um, when I started looking at, at, at some creatures through the lens of a camera that most people wouldn't even notice, um, that's when I got really interested. So I started off with, you know, a, a bit of curiosity. I mean, I, I love nature. So, you know, nature, nature is, um, is something that I really enjoy. And, uh, 
Um, but then I suddenly realized, but hold on, with this, with this camera, I can actually see things that most people never see. Most people never take an interest in, um, you know, and, uh, and, and, and it, it opened up a whole new world. Um, I mean, I've taken pictures of, of, of creatures that are a millimeter in length. Um, and, uh, and, and they've got amazing colors. Some of them are metallic. Um, and, uh, you know, a large percentage of the world's population will never see that creature unless somebody like me takes a photograph of it and puts it up there for somebody to see. And even when they do see it, they possibly don't understand it. Um, you know, and I think that's, you know, that, that's the thing. So it's really, it's, it's really getting in, engaged with your subject, you know, and yeah, you talk about, you know, the next gadget and, and, and yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a challenge. Many of us have whatever sphere of interest we, we happen, happen to be in. And photography is a particularly bad one because, because the technology is moving and changing so fast. Uh, um, and, and you get it, you get gas, you know, you get a, acquisition syndrome. You, you want, you want the next, uh, the next camera body, the next lens, uh, and, and it can get an extremely expensive hobby. So if you're not making money out of it, it, it can become really expensive. Um, I think a lot of photographers are, are, are driven by looking for that, that real, you know, great next image, whatever their subject happens to be. And I mean, you can see some great photographs behind me and none of them are mine, unfortunately, but, uh, but, uh, you know, they, they, they great, they great, uh, they great images. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I think it's that drive for, for, um, satisfaction at the end of the day, really. Um, and, and that's what we want from our businesses. You know, we, we don't want it to be drudgery. We don't want it to be, you know, hard. Um, you know, again, I'll use a quote that, that Trevor sometimes uses, you know, if you're not in business, to, to have fun and make a profit, what the hell are you doing in business? You know, and, and, and I think that's, you know, it's, it, uh, it, what, what is the level of satisfaction you're getting out of whatever that activity is that you're actually partaking in and, and whether it's a hobby or whether it's a business, um, or sports, you know, if you're not getting that level of satisfaction out of it, you're going to stop. It's going to come to a point where it's boring. You're going to give up. Um, so it's keeping that interest, keeping that curiosity, keeping that, that energy, that passion, that excitement about what you're doing going. And the only way you're going to do that um, is by always looking at, some, at, at the same things sometimes with new eyes. Because um, otherwise, you know, once you've seen an elephant, you've seen an elephant. Um, so why do you want to see another one? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, uh, it, come, it comes back to comes back to, to that level of, of engagement with whatever your topic or your subject is. All right, thank you. Any uh, last word there from Dawn? No, I really enjoyed this, Ivan. And I think, you know, like you say, uh, half of us miss the, the finer detail because you, you really got to look hard for that. And I mean, there's so much beauty in those little, little things that we don't even notice. You know, it's like if you walk outside, look at the trees, look at the colors of the leaves, they're starting to change color. There's so much beauty in every aspect of that. So. I think everybody's just in a bit of a rush, you know, they're not noticing, but I loved your, I loved your presentation. Thank you, Arvin. Thank you, Thanks, Jasper. Thanks, Dawn. Uh, closing word from you, Jess. Thank you, Jasper. Yeah, I think the, the comparisons and the analogies are very, very powerful and profound, and it may easily be converted into uh, a business sense. Um, and there are many rich lessons in that, um, you know, um, constantly looking for that one uh, killer photo or killer picture. Uh, and the same with business, you know, you're looking for that one great opportunity to take you into another level. So the, like that, there are many other um, comparisons. And I think this this conditioning of the mind that photography gives you 
can be extremely powerful in the context of being a business leader or a business person. Um, and, and, you know, I rather enjoyed <coughs> the many, <coughs> excuse me, the many insights coming through from Ivan because I was constantly relating it back to, you know, to the business landscape. So thank you for that, Ivan, and, 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 and yourself, Casper, as well. Thanks. Thanks, Rajesh. Thank you. Now, you know, I think this topic is so rich that uh, we spend another hour on it because I was just thinking of how do, you, how do you get to that one great photo? Well, you take 100 and you throw away 99 probably. Uh, so, uh, you know, but you, if you haven't keep on taking photos for, on that 100, you would have missed out on that one out of the 100 great photos. Anyway, so enough of that. Yeah, if, if, if I can, yes, but just, just to, to finish on that and, and again, just picking up on something you mentioned right back in the beginning. Um, and and it, it's specifically true for me with, with the macro photography, but I think it's, it's much the same um, with, you know, with uh, photographing other things as well. Um, and that was uh, two words, I think, uh, that we, we sort of touched on there, which is the one is um, persistence and the other is patience. And then when people ask me, you know, how do you take these photographs of the, all these little little creatures? And I say, well, I, I, you know, I've got my two assistants, you know, persistence and patience. And and I work with I work with them, and uh, and and that's how you get it. And and sometimes it takes time. Um, and and uh, and yes, yeah, sometimes it does take hundreds of photographs. But uh, you know, the more you take, the better you get at it. Uh, and and I think that's you know one of the keys. And and, it's, and again, a key that comes back down to business you know persistence patience um, and consistency are three three key words that uh, that apply to to most successful endeavors uh, you know in, in, in this world you know nobody becomes an overnight success but we tend to use that phrase you know but guess what it's taken five ten fifteen years of consistency patience practice um, and 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 making sure you you improve every time you know, you take the next one, you take the next one, you review what you've done. Can you improve on it? How do you improve on it? Do you need to change the angle? Do you need to change the lens? Do you need to change uh, the light? Um, you know, you spoke about you know, taking photographs at different times of the day. It makes a huge difference, um, you know, depending on the kind of image that you're looking for. So, yeah. So there we were. Uh, a great session, great analogies, and for business people, you know, go and reflect on that. Use this as an introduction topic amongst you in your own group and uh, add some more uh, flesh to it. And uh, we will continue with this business chat. Next week, uh, we have Milira Sakwala that will talk to us on uh, uh, mental health for SMEs. And I think this is a very apt topic as well. How do you stay sane during these insane circumstances? So. Get the word out to your friends and family. And if you have ideas for topics and uh, talk to us, we would like to accommodate that. And uh, yes, Ivan, uh, thank you. And for people who want to participate and also be speakers at uh, these events, uh, look at our uh, say, uh, uh, membership uh, uh, pro propositions there on fccc.co.za. And for our members, we will definitely slot you in and give you a chance to introduce a topic and then let's uh, sit around and chat and become wiser. Like uh, the, today was really very and very informative. Again, thank you very much, Ivan, and have a great week, everyone. And let's uh, meet again uh, in a week's time. Okay, thanks thank, you, yes, thank you, Thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. Uh, just a quick one, Ivan. And Jasper, Jasper, I'll do a topic on the virtual trade fair. Uh, but you just need to check when I'm available because now today I'm also going on another installation. So yeah, that would be good. Uh, I haven't seen it. I have corrected it, Ivan. So that would be basically the, the presentation I do. And then Ivan, I just wanted to chat to you about YP. Okay. Have you had any feedback? I haven't had a chance to actually get on to Gavin, to be honest. Um, so I, I do need to, to drive him on that one. Okay.